from the beautiful white sandy beaches of South Florida. This is the Fort Lauderdale Open, the second stop on the Coors Light Women's Professional Beach Volleyball Tour. Okay, back on the beach here at the Fort Lauderdale Open, we started with 32 teams in the tournament. Right now, let's take a look back at some of the action from the semifinals. First, it was top-seeded Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby up against Wendy Fletcher and Marla O'Hara. Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan were really on their game. We saw tremendous serves from both players and really dominating defensive play. Fletcher and O'Hara, the fifth-seeded team here at the Fort Lauderdale Open. Liz Masakayan ending the game with an ace serve. A pretty routine match for Masakayan and Kirby, leaving them plenty of time to cool down before the championship. By the time the second semifinal began, the dark clouds had begun to roll in. The number two seeded Barbara Fontana and Lori Cotis, challenged by the number three seeds, Gail Castro and Elaine Roquet. We saw fierce defense on both sides of the net, a very competitive match. Both teams really scrambling on defense. You see Gail Castro down in the sand, coming up with the dig there. These two teams really matched up well. Both teams with the big blocker and the quick defensive player. Barbara Fontana showing why she was the defensive player of the year last year. But the skies were threatening, and as the storm moved in, the players tried to finish this one off. Castro and Roquet had the advantage here at the end of the match. The wind was in their faces, and that's what you want in beach volleyball. And that made it 14-13, Roquet and Castro. And then the rain really started coming down in buckets. After a one-hour, 41-minute delay, the match resumed. Cotis served to try and tie it up. The conditions, a very important part of this match towards the end. The sand getting very thick and heavy, difficult to move, much like quicksand. And the ball, of course, is taking on weight as it holds water. So Roquet and Castro advanced to the finals, but they would have to sleep on it. For the first time in the eight-year history of the tour, the women were forced into an overnight rain delay. Get it moving. It moving. It has turned into a three-day competition, but the sun is back out, and the players are ready to go. That's the number one team of Liz Masakian and Carolyn Kirby warming up with an early morning jog, and they will be challenged by the team seated third here in Fort Lauderdale, Elaine Roquet and Gail Castro in the championship match, and how do you see it, Maria? Well, I think this rain delay is a disadvantage for Castro and Roquet, given that they had a lot of momentum going into that final match. Um, as far as a strategy as to how to beat Kirby and Masakayan, I say you pick one player and you go after her. I personally would pick Liz Masakayan. You serve at her, you hit at her, and you just pray that she's having a bad day. But they haven't had many of those lately. Now, here are your rules of the beach. Games are played to 15. You must win by two. You can only score when you're serving. The teams change sides every five points. Each team gets two full timeouts and four sand timeouts per game. Our referee for this championship match, Verna Club Nicken, and we are just about ready to go. Liz Masakayan will serve first. You'll see Liz Masakayan using the jump serve. She has a very effective jump serve, one of the best on the beach. Great dig by Masakayan. And she puts it away, one nothing. Masakayan and Kirby. Okay, has got to get up to the net to block Masakayan. That's a very crucial part of their game, Roquet's blocking. Liz Masakayan, a former All-American from UCLA, now a volunteer assistant there. Right here. Somebody! Go, go, go! Ah! Elaine Roquet coming up with a pokey shot. She sees the defense is deep in the court. That's a side out. Gail Castro will go back to serve. She also has that powerful jump shot and why jump serve. And why is that so important in beach volleyball? Well, it can, it's a tremendous tool to score points. If you've got a, a forceful jump serve and are able to score points with it, it can win a match for you. 
Very difficult to return. Castro led the tour with 80 aces last season. Masakayan hits that one long. It's one all. Masakayan doesn't have enough top spin on that hit. Very important when you hit the ball to follow all the way through so that you create a, a top spin on the ball. All right. Gail Castro goes for it on the serve, serves it long, though, and that's a side out. We may see Gail miss a lot of serves in this match because she really will be working to score points with her serve. That's very important if they want to win this match for her to be able to do that. Castro slamming it between Kirby and Masakayan for the side out. We had some big crowds for the semifinals, but a lot of folks couldn't make it back for this final championship match. You'll notice Elaine Roquet uses what we call a float serve. She stays on the ground. And the way you serve a float serve is you kind of stop your hand as you're hitting the ball to create the float on the ball. Great scrambling on defense there by Castro. Can't finish it off, though. Side out. Gail Castro just laying herself out in the sand. You know, for as tall as she is, she really is an incredible defensive player. Still one all, Masakayan serving. On the other side of the net, Gail Castro in the white t-shirt. Roque in the purple suit. Tremendous agility there by Elaine Roque. Castro unable to get it over the net. 2-1, Masakayan and Kirby. Two, one. Elaine Roquet does an amazing job of playing the ball over her head as she's running to the back line. That's such a tough play to make. And then she gets up to the net for a very dominating hit. Liz Masakayan, her seventh season on the Pro Tour. Great serve. Roquet can't get it, and it's 3-1 Masakayan and Kirby. Roque and Castro call a sand timeout to regroup. Now, this matchup features the tour's top money winners from the last year. Kirby led the way with over $65,000 in earnings. Now, you have to remember that that is just prize money. They also make quite a bit of money from their endorsements, and then there's also international play in the offseason. Warming up out here, Castro, you've noticed, has taken off the T-shirt. Another point for the top team, and with Kirby and Masakayan leading 4-1, the teams will change sides. As some future beach volleyball stars look on, we'll take a break. Kirby and Masakayan are very fortunate to have found such a partnership, especially when you consider that the average partnership out here lasts only as long as a good Hollywood marriage. <laughs> and as we rejoin this championship match, Masakayan and Kirby leading 7-3. Nice dig by Castro. Masakayan with the off-speed shot. Boy, there was nobody there, Maria. No, Liz did a good job of reading the defense there. She noticed that Castro and Roquet were deep in the court, and she went for the short, smart, short shot. Very smart play. 8-3, Masakayan back to serve. Castro hits it right through the block, side out. Now, what did Castro and Roquet need to do to get back into this? As I said earlier, it's very important for Castro and Roquet to stay on Masakayan with their serves. It's been successful for them so far in the game. So they need to serve at Masakayan, and Elaine Roquet needs to block some balls. Castro serving at 3-8. Masakayan hits it wide, point to Castro Roque. Castro had teamed with Lori Cotis. You had mentioned the short uh, pairings, but she had teamed with Lori Cotis for a record 69 straight tournaments, but changed partners last season. You'll notice that the top few teams will tend to stay together yeah. longer, but it's lower in the ranks that the players are always switching around trying to come up with that magic partnership. <laughs> Verna Club Nick and blows the whistle. Double contact called on Kirby. Well, she does not like that call. I don't blame her. That looked as clean as can be to me. 
Let's take another look at this set by Carolyn Kirby, who's called for the double contact here. It looks completely clean to me. Now, the, the call that the ref made was a double contact, which means that the ref thinks that her hands did not contact the ball at the same time. There wasn't any spin on it, which usually indicates that there is a double contact. Really a surprising call. I can't agree with that one. Come on, Castro with the tough serve. Gail Castro hits it into the corner, and the challengers pull to within two. 8-6, Massakine and Kirby still leading. Massakine and Kirby call a fan timeout to collect themselves. And a reminder, this is just the first of five women's Pro Beach volleyball events we'll have for you this spring and summer. We will follow the tour from coast to coast. Gail Castro back to serve. Her team trails by two. Straight up. Oh! Blocked by Roque, but it goes wide, side out. Very important for Elaine Roque to get some blocks against Massa Kyan if she and Castro want to come out on top in this match. Kirby back to serve. You talked about how fit these athletes are. Kirby was named one of the top fittest people in the United States by Shape Magazine. Castro and Roque having trouble with that serve. Castro puts it away, side out. The key to this play is that Nectar set by Elaine Roque. Gail Castro not giving her much of a pass to work with, but she pops the ball right on top of the net. Here you can see Gail Castro giving her partner Roque blocking signals. She's telling Elaine where she wants her to block and where she wants her to pull off and play defense. But Kirby goes over the block and the serve will go back to Kirby and Masakayan. Smart play by Carolyn Kirby. She sees the block. She goes high line over Elaine Roque, seeing that Gail Castro was playing defense in the other part of the court. Masakayan back to serve. Castro set goes over the net, and Kirby puts it away. Kirby and Masakayan lead now 9-6. Key to this play is that over set by Gail Castro. You cannot give Carolyn Kirby a set like that. She says, this is the best set I've seen all day, and hammers away. Back to the Fort Lauderdale Open. This is the championship match. Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby leading Gail Castro and Elaine Roque, 9-6. Masakayan serving. Right here, right here. Right! Oh, 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 oh. Great effort by Massa Kyan, but she can't get it up. Side out. I think Carolyn Kirby was surprised to see her partner able to get that ball up. Tremendous save by Liz Massa Kyan. Six serving nine. Most of their points for Castro and Roque have come from Castro's serve. 36-year-old tour veteran. Massa Kyan misses. It looked like she changed her mind right in the middle of that hit. Absolutely. It looked like she was going to go for a cut shot and decided to turn and go back the other way with the ball. You really can't do that. Once you've committed to something, you need to follow through because that is often what happens. Massa Kyan and Kirby still lead by two. Roque and Masakayan joust at the net. Roque puts it down for the easy point. Kirby and Masakayan want a timeout. The key to this play is the set by Kirby. She jams her partner too close to the net. You can't do that, especially against a big block like that of Elaine Roque. Good heads up play here by Roque, poking the ball deep in the court where the defense isn't. So during the season, these top players spend just about all of their time on the beach. That's not true, however, for many of the women who must hold down other jobs as well. What I want to know is, can Barbara Fontana wear those braids to court? Probably not. There's Gail Castro back to serve in the offseason. She officiates high school and college matches. Eight serving nine. Kirby and Massacayan struggling. Free ball chance for a point. 
Castro pounds it down. They get the point. It's all tied up at 9-all, and that is the most points anyone has scored against Kirby and Masakayan this season. Castro OK doing a good job of taking advantage of that ball handling error by Carolyn Kirby. Castro with the serve to Kirby. Castro with the set to Roque. She tips it over. Nice save by Castro. Can't get it over, though, and that's a side out. Interesting to see that Castro and Roque have chosen to serve back at Carolyn Kirby. I think they need to keep the ball at Liz Mastakayan. Carolyn Kirby to the back line. Elaine Roque going up here with the pokey that tips the net. And this is just an amazing defensive play by Carolyn Kirby as she's able to pop this ball up. Because what happens when the ball ticks the net is that it kind of changes direction. And it can really throw you off on defense. But she's able to recover. This is the kind of play that keeps Kirby and Mastakayan on top. Elaine Roquet jamming her partner here. The trajectory on this set just isn't quite right. Very difficult ball for Gail Castro to play. Castro and Roquet trailed at one point. 8-3. They have come back, though, to tie it up. It's 9-all. Carolyn Kirby back to serve. Yeah. Castro with the set. Kirby diving for it, can't come up with it. Elaine Roquet comes up with a sharp cut shot here. Elaine Roquet, one of the more agile players on the beach. She says that she develops her agility through yoga, which she practices several times a week. She has a full-time yoga coach and uh, even says when she retires from volleyball that she'll probably teach yoga. Masakayan goes into the net, and that's a point for Roque and Castro. 10-9, their first lead of the match. And there again, you saw Carolyn Kirby setting her partner, Masakayan, a little bit too tight. Kirby's setting seems to be off just a little bit in this match. Quite surprising, considering she was voted the best setter on the beat last year. Roque hits it over, 11-9. Kirby and Masakayan beginning to break down their 40-match winning streak in jeopardy. As the players get ready to change sides, we'll take a short break. We'll return to the Fort Lauderdale Open in a moment. Welcome back to Fort Lauderdale. Carolyn Kirby and Liz Masakayan in an unfamiliar position trailing in this match. Roque and Castro on an 8-1 scoring run, and they've got the serve. Get one. Push for one. Very important for Elaine Roque to stay on Liz Masakayan at this point with her serve. Liz seems to be having a little bit of a problem okay, hitting serve, against Elaine. Roque, so therefore, if Elaine serves to her, she'll be the one hitting. Good. It goes to Masakayan. Blocked by Roque. Great reflex by Masakayan to keep it going. That's on the line, and it's good. Side out. A little bit of left falls in the direction of Liz Masakayan there as she just ticks the line. Nine is serve at 11. We saw again in that play Liz having trouble with Elaine Roquet's block. Elaine's just doing a great job of getting up and over the net quickly and penetrating really well. Do you get the sense that Masakayan and Kirby might be getting a little impatient? Absolutely. Kirby and Masakayan like for the games to go quickly. They're very quick players. They like for things to happen. They're not a very patient team. So the way to beat them is to be patient and to side out very consistently. And that's what Castro and Roque have done up until this point. And that's what Castro just did. Another side out, and Castro will go back to serve. There you see the blocking signals again. Nice dig. Oh, and a great save by Roque. Kirby can't get to it. It's 12-9, Roque and Castro. Kirby and Masakayan want a timeout. Castro with a big dig. She'll take that ball to the Gail Castro does a good job of reading Liz. This is Liz's favorite hit, this angle shot. You know, I remember playing against her when she was at UCLA. My coach would say, Maria, plant yourself on the angle and be ready for Liz to hit it because she inevitably will. Gail Castro reading her all the way, coming up with a big defensive play. Castro and Roque also becoming familiar with that Masakayan shot. 
Gail Castro has been serving incredibly well in this tournament. 14 aces so far. The Silver Bullet ace leader. No one can catch her here in Fort Lauderdale. 12-9, Castro still serving. She has served nine of their 12 points. Kirby and Massatine seem very poised, very relaxed at this point, given the situation here. Shows the confidence they have in each other. Masakaya blocked by Roque. Another point for Castro and Roque. It's 13-9. And again, Elaine Roque able to come up with the big block. Doing a great job of penetrating. Let's take another look at that. Oh, you know what? She didn't actually block that ball at all. The ball taped. Liz Masakayan hit the ball into the net, and it falls down on her side. Either way, it is a point for Castro and Roque, and they are two points from the championship. Kirby and Masakayan have been so dominant. What's going through their minds right now? Well, they know they need to bear down right here and pass the ball, and then they need to come back with some really strong serving, and they're capable of doing that. Castro going for the ace, but hits it wide, and that's a side out. Kirby and Masakayan will get the serve back. Important for them to bear down and play some defense here. Liz Masakayan needs to come up with a big defensive play. Okay, sets Castro. Castro hits it long, just misses the line. That's a point for Kirby and Masakayan. Not a mistake they can afford to make at this point. Gail Castro ran under that ball a little bit. Didn't have the top spin she needed on that hit. Kirby and Masakayan still trail by three. Untimely service error. That's a side out as Kirby serves it into the net. And again, at this point in the game, you will see a lot of service errors because both teams are trying to score points with their serves. Roque to Masakayan. Masakayan floats it down the line for the side out. Boy, it takes a lot of confidence to try a shot like that at this point in the tournament. I was just going to say that, Andrea. I mean, only a player like Liz Masakayan would go for such a difficult line shot at a time like this. Confidence and guts. Masakayan serving. Right there, middle, middle, middle. Castro sets it over the net. Kirby, she finds the line as well, and it's 13-11. The momentum has definitely shifted back in favor of Kirby and Masakayan. Castro and Roque having ball control problems at this point. And they want to stand time out. Both teams plotting their strategy, trying to close out this match. They have it now. We need to... composed. You can hear both teams kind of building each other up. They're a support system for each other at this point. And you can hear Kirby and Masakayan say, watch out for that short shot. Castro and Roque have burned us nine times with that short shot. You can hear both teams kind of strategizing. Kirby and Masakayan have won 40 straight matches, haven't lost since last July. Castro and Roque, the last team to beat them. She's out. I got it right here. Right here. Right here. Nice. Blocked by Castro. And there's a lift called. Carolyn Kirby called for a lift off the block. That's a good call by Verna Klubnik and the referee. You can see here the ball comes off the block and 
Carolyn Kirby plays it open hand with two hands. You can only do that with a driven ball. She needed to have her hands together for that to be a legal play. Here we go. That's a side out, and it'll be Castro serving. Still two points from the championship, 13-11. set to Mastodion. Oh, and she finds the line again, placing it perfectly. Once again, only Masakayan would go for a shot like that. What a hit by Liz Masakayan straight down the line. You can see there at the last minute that Elaine Roquet decides not to go up and block. Not a wise decision at that point because Carolyn Kirby set her partner right on the net. Masakayan, the best hitter on the tour in 1993. Kirby back to serve. A big block by Masakayan to pull within one where she has really turned up her game since that timeout. Masakayan showing here why she is such a tremendous all-around player, really turning it on at the net with her hitting and blocking. This block against Gail Castro, quite amazing. She goes up, reaches out with her left hand to block the ball. Such agility. And with the momentum now shifting, the players will change sides, and we will return to sunny Fort Lauderdale in a moment. Men's Pro Beach Volleyball Tour. No one is getting buried here. A tight championship match at the Fort Lauderdale Open. Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby have rallied from a 13-9 deficit to close to 13-12. Kirby will be back to serve, trying to tie it up. She and Masakayan have accomplished so much on this tour, they've really given the tour an identity. Yes, Andrea, they really have, and the sport is growing so much. You know, back when I used to play, say, eight years ago, you'd win a cooler if you won. I mean, now these women are making, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. The sport is really growing and evolving. Roque right down the middle for the side out. It's surprising to me that Kirby and Masakayan didn't put a block up there. When you see the set right on the net, you've got to go up with a block. Elaine Roquet goes down the middle with the shot. You know, Andrea, the down the middle shot is often very effective on the beach, whether you're serving or hitting, because what happens is there usually isn't a lot of communication, and neither player will go for the ball. The set to Masakayan. Masakayan off the block, and that's a side out. You can see Kirby and Masakayan giving the referee a hard time there. They seem a little uptight. They're ready for this match to be over with. Masakayan back to serve now. Okay. They trail by one. Masakayan serves it wide, maybe feeling a little bit of that pressure now. You know, when you're the team that's on top, you do have more pressure because everybody expects you to win, and you expect to win. Yeah. So it'll be Gail Castro back to serve now. No. Oh, and Castro sends it into the net. Another side out. One at a time. That's the eighth miss serve for Castro Roque in this match so far. Let's see if Kirby can get one in. Kirby and Masakayan trailing by one. It's 13-12. Right there, straight up, straight up. The set to Roque. Oh, a little bit of luck. That one drops in for yet another side out. Good play by Gail Castro pulling this ball out of the net. That's a tough play to make. Roquet's ball just kind of hugs the net all the way down, and uh, finally a little luck falls in her direction. One at a time. Elaine Roquet thanking anyone for that luck. Roquet and Castro, 1-14 and 14 against Kirby and Masakayan last year. They've got a chance, though, to do something here in 1994. Roquet back to serve. Hey, yo! Yeah! Masakayan answers. You can hear Kirby yelling for her partner to hit the angle. Andrew, that's a very important part of this game, the communication between players. They have to talk to each other and help each other out with their hitting because it's difficult to look into the other court and to try to keep your eye on the ball. Six 
side outs in a row. Kirby and Masakayan trailing by one. Perfect set off the net. Masakayan, oh, okay, gets a hand on it, but she can't control it, and we are tied at 13 all. Big point for Kirby and Masakayan. Gail Castro comes up with a great play here, setting her partner Elaine Roquet out of the net. Elaine Roquet should have pounded that ball. Instead, she uses a shot that is easily picked up by Liz Masakayan. So Roquet and Castro miss the opportunity. We've got an exciting championship match. We'll be back with the conclusion in a moment. Liz Masakayan. Masakayan will go back to serve, getting the blocking signals from Kirby. All right. Okay, great dig by Masakayan. Liz Masakayan puts it away, and that'll be a point for Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby. There's an example of why Kirby and Masakayan have been able to stay on top. Masakayan coming up with a big defensive play right when they need it, diving out with her left hand, popping it up with one arm. So Kirby and Masakayan have regained the lead. What a comeback by Kirby and Masakayan. Championship point. Championship point. Judy! <laughs> Serve to Roquet. Right oh. And Roquet finds the open court. That is 18 kills for Elaine Roquet. A perfect time for that one. Catherine Roquet need to turn it on here. You know, the talk all year has been about how Kirby and Masakayan are unbeatable. Here's a chance for Catherine Roquet to do it. They need a tough serve by Castro here. Castro trying to tie it up. The serve went to Kirby. Oh, and Castro can't get to it. Another side out. Lays it in. So, now Kirby so it'll be championship point line. number two 14, for Kirby 15. and Masakayan. Kirby and Masakayan really showing how they can turn it on when they need to. I mean, they were down 13-9, and they've really turned this game around. Kirby serving. Kirby goes for the ace. Oh, it is so close, but it is just out, and that'll be another side out, another chance for Roque and Castro. It was almost championship point, but this ball goes just long. The rule here is if the ball touches any part of the line, then it is good. That was very close. Roque serves it to Masakayan. Masakayan smacks it down, and Castro can't get to it. So it'll be another side out, a third championship point third time for Masakayan and Kirby. We'll put it into play. Masakayan really elevating her level of play when her team needs it. That's one way that Liz Masakayan has really matured as a player. Is she's developed so many more shots and so many more angles that she can hit. And she'll try to wrap it up here. An ace by Masakayan to win the championship. Masakayan and Kirby, the winners over Castro and Roquet, 15-13. Kirby and Masakayan keeping their poise. Masakayan comes up with a big play at the end of the game, straight down the middle, the old husband and wife play. You take it, I got it. Here we see it again. What a tremendous serve by Liz Masakayan. She hits the ball so hard, she practically throws herself off balance. 11 straight tour event victories for Liz Masakayan and Carolyn Kirby. They won the last nine of last season and are now 2-0 in 94.